So recently for my work, I've been doing some fractals, which means I have to make patterns that are repeating over and over again. So I thought let's try to make something in Blender as well, which might not be, you know, as simple because Blender isn't like very fractalish program, but with geometry nodes, we can do something. We're not gonna delete the cube, which is pretty rare, don't you think so? So I'm gonna scale this cube down to for about this size. So basically we're trying to form this kind of a crystal here, as you see, and I'm gonna scale it like that. Let's say eight. And now I'm gonna do so that I'm gonna scale this on the Y axis. So we have like this kind of a shape. So the next thing what we have to do now is that I'm gonna go to the face mode, select these faces here and also the faces down here and press I, which means I'm gonna inset those. And as you see, we have this uh, like a problem here. This isn't insetting like in a very nice way. So what you need to do is to apply the scale and try again, and now this is better. And I'm gonna scale those on the Y axis. No, on the Z axis, right? So we have a uh, crystal shape here, which is looking pretty okay. And also I added like a little indent in the middle here. What we need to do is to inset once more, and then extrude. Well, actually, Command Z, let's not extrude right now. Let's select from this menu here, uh, extrude along normals, which means I'm gonna extrude those inside and those inside as well, but they're gonna extrude in the opposing directions, right? So extrude like uh, that, you're gonna see from the sides. And this is our crystal. So how do we add a geometry node thing now? So first let's add something we can add those geometry nodes onto. For example, this cube here. Geometry nodes, select the cube and add a new set of geometry nodes. And let's uh, delete this group input here. And let's add an object info node, which means we're gonna input this detail here into the set. So now we have this uh, thing here I can hide this detail and also hide this one. And now what we have to do is to add a branch uh, or like, where is, ah, it's here. So, uh, what we need to do is that we need to add a branch like here and also here. So this is like the most simple way of making a snowflake. So let's do that. Let's add a transform node because we have to um, transform it. And let's add also a join geometry node. Let's drag this one here. Let's drag this one here and now I'm gonna move this one, for example, on the x-axis. And you see we have a different copy of this uh, detail. But the problem is that if I want to rotate it, for example, it rotates like that. And this isn't very good because it has to rotate from the point here, not uh, from the middle point here, because then it's gonna like stick out properly. So to fix that, I'm gonna take the um, detail thing here. I'm gonna move this on the y-axis so that it um, has the origin point down there, so something like uh, that. And now I'm gonna hide it again. And let's see how we can move this little uh, branch here. So move this up for, for about here. And if you look at snowflakes, you see they have pretty much like the angle of 60 degrees there. So I'm gonna add the angle of 60 degrees here. And now we also have to make it smaller. So for that, I'm gonna add a value because this is gonna allow me to scale on all the axes at once. But we don't want to scale on all the axes at once because you know on the Z axis, they should remain for about the same scale, you know. So I'm gonna add a combine X, Y, Z. Combine X, Y, Z. And on the X and on the Y, I'm gonna scale this. But on the Z, I'm gonna keep it the same thing. And let's say this is our scale. So for about, let's say 0.5, let's see how it looks. It looks like that. We need the second one also. So I'm gonna take the same transform node and drag from the geometry to here and connect it to the joint geometry and rotate it minus 60 degrees and also add the same scaling from this combine XYZ. And you know, here we have the same thing. Maybe on the X, they should be actually in zero. So this is our snowflake. And also you see the Z scale should be a bit smaller. So I'm gonna go to this combine XYZ and make them a bit more reasonable on the Z axis. So we have the first iteration or the like this first step of our snowflake. And this is actually gonna work from this from this very moment. So 
I'm gonna do like that. So shift drag and I'm gonna add those dots here. So that now when I group this whole thing together, everything together here, uh, these dots are gonna stay inside and you're gonna see what I mean by that. Command G and now the dots are inside and we have you know, this value and all those other nodes outside. And the dots are gonna make, make it so that we don't have like a million inputs here. So dots uh, are here, very handy things. And I'm gonna take the X scale here, which is gonna be our scale. I'm gonna call this scale. And I'm gonna drag this to the output of the group so that now the group has the geometry input and geometry output and also the scale output. And why is this important, you're asking me? Well, if you take the node group and you put it here, then nothing happens. But if you connect the scale here, you see we have another repetition of those. So for example, if you could have like a different number here, we could have a different scale also. And you can play around with that. I'm gonna keep the same scale and I'm gonna duplicate those nodes so that we have a reasonable branch of a snowflake. For example, something like that. Maybe we can even add one more. Yes, this is looking very nice. Without, with. Yes, this is definitely better. So this is uh, the branch and now we're gonna add the whole snowflake. So for that, let's add another plane, for example, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna add a set of geometry nodes where I, again, delete the group input and add a circle. So the circle should have six vertices because this is gonna be the basis of our snowflake. On each of those points, we're gonna have one of those branches. And to do that, well, we need a point instance node, point instance, let's instance the branch, bum. We have a circle, but as you see, all of those like uh, little branches are facing in this direction or yes, in this direction. So to fix that, what we have to do is to use an align rotation to vector node and set the vector here, down here to attribute and use the attribute as the position. So this means that from the center here, where the circle um, is, the center point of the circle, we're gonna draw some vectors to each of those points and they, this node here is gonna try to align all of those branches to those uh, vectors. So right now we're aligning on the x-axis, let's try Z doesn't work, does something like that. Let's try Y and this does work. So this fixed, let's just increase or decrease the scale so that we have a really nice little a snowflake like that. Very nice. I'm gonna move the branch forward here. And as you see, they are intersecting quite a bit. So this might be what you want. Maybe, well, I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna move those branches up a bit like that, like 10 meters. And also I'm gonna decrease the scale uh, like that. Let's check what my snowflake looked like. It looked like that. So basically it had some more uh, more iterations and more repetitions. So uh, I duplicated this node group here and this looks like that. And I'm gonna add a join geometry node in the end here. So basically what I did here is that I um, took the node group and I made a separate node group out of that, which means pressing on the six here. So this is the node group 001 and I'm gonna make it negative. So now we have the negative crystals growing here and I'm gonna add another repetition with the same scale, duplicating those like that. So basically this is like that. Maybe we, sh we should also increase like to something like that. This looks maybe not the best, but anyways, this is how I made this thing here. Also, it seems to me that this um, a detail here is way too thick. So I'm gonna take it on the x-axis and scale it down like that. And now we have this snowflake. And a very important part of a snowflake is the material. So go to the shading workspace and here, you're not gonna add the material to this object here or this object, you're gonna add the material to this object here. So this is called material right now. I'm gonna call this ice and uh, delete this thing here and also switch to cycles because cycles is a lot better for this kind of like caustic and glass and ice stuff. And now let's switch to the HDR, which is a bit more like a world or winter type HDR here, like that. And now let's add a material to this object here, which is gonna be 
a glass material, you guessed that right. And we have the snowflake, goodbye, the tutorial is finished. No, it actually isn't. We're gonna make a, um, a nice effect on that one. Actually, this is like the correct way a snowflake should look. On the pictures we like made with the microscope, the snowflake looks pretty much like this thing here. But we're gonna make it a bit more artistic. So for that, we need a geometry node, right? Because we're making everything with geometry nodes. And switch to the parametric thing here, which is gonna triangulate the faces. And basically it's gonna give us like this, um, like a crystal type of a, of a bump. So I'm gonna add a normal map node here and do something like that. And now it looks very, very bad. I'm gonna just plug it in normal. This is way too strong. So let's decrease this to 0.2. And now you see these crystals look a lot more like snow crystals. So without, it was like that like a very plain thing and with it looks like that. It has some more interest. Now also the IOR or the refraction index of the eyes isn't one point, one point, I just forgot the numbers in English, 1.45, it isn't 1.45, it is 1.306 for about this kind of refraction. So this made it look more like ice, at least in theory, and it seems to me that also in practice. And what we're gonna do now is that I'm gonna add a noise texture. So a noise texture is basically gonna give us like a bump that looks like that, you know? It's gonna basically form these kinds of like um, things, like this kind of pattern here, and you're gonna ask me how do you do that? Well, I'm gonna show you in a minute. So first we need texture coordinates for each noise texture. You need some coordinates, you know, and connect the object to the vector. And right now the noise texture looks like that, not anything like this pattern here. So to fix that, I'm gonna add a mapping node, put it here, and now we can move this, for example, on the Y axis, which means, um, we must switch to Eevee for a minute so that you can see this in real time. So the noise looks like that and we can move this on the y-axis here, which means it's gonna move. But what we want to do is to move it only on the y-axis on the sides here. We don't want to move this in the center so that it forms like this kind of a shape. And for that we have an attribute separate XYZ node. So separate XYZ to take the object, put it here, and you have the X separation here. So let's use a combine XYZ node now and let's use this as the Y movement, as we want it to happen. So right now the noise texture looks like that. It's like tilted, so it's basically having like um, this movement or this uh, tilt on one side of the crystal, but it's not having this on the other side of the crystal. So to do that, we need a math operation called absolute. So absolute nodes, X without absolute looks like that, but with absolute, it looks like that. So this is gonna make it so that the noise texture in the end is gonna look like that. But it's not very, like, it's inverted. And in my opinion, it looks better if it is like, if the, like the cones are in, the, in another direction. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add a subtraction node and subtract this whole gradient here from the value of one. So this inverted it and also let's see how this uh, noise texture looks right now. And this looks exactly as we have wanted. So if you want to make this stronger, what you can do is that you can just take a multiplication node and multiply it and it starts to look like that, very nice. Maybe I'm gonna multiply it with two and then it is finished. Let's switch to cycles again. And let's use this noise here as the bump for this thing. So I'm gonna take the bump, the normal to the normal, and the factor or the color to the height. So the bump right now looks like that. Quite some nice bump for a snow crystal. And I'm gonna decrease the strength to 4.5, the distance to 0.5 and the strength to 4.15, maybe even more, maybe let's say point, let's say 0.2. So this is the thing here, and it's maybe a bit uh, 
too dense, so I'm gonna decrease the scale for about two. And this seems to be finished, so let's see how the glass looks. Pretty nice. So this was the tutorial, and if you're interested in the project file, this is available on Patreon. And then I also have Discord where you can chat with some people doing also Blender and some procedural stuff, mathematics, asking for help, all that stuff. So this is the Discord. If you're interested, check this out. And I guess that's pretty much the story here.